Hello, in this video, I'll be going through some tips for the GCSE non-calculator maths exam. So let's get on with it. Before we get started, if you'd like tutoring right now, look in the comments for more information. So first, we'll be going through some trig values that you must know off by heart. First of all, we have cos of zero, which is one, and sine of zero and tan of zero are both zero. Those just remember them off by heart. It shouldn't be too hard to remember. Now I'll show you a way to get the results for the rest of these angles. However, in an exam, it's probably better just to memorize these. So to get the values for 30 degrees and 60 degrees, first we just draw an equilateral triangle. Now, an equilateral triangle is going to have all of its angles 60 degrees. So we can label them up. And we'll have this equilateral triangle having side lengths of 2. And notice, if we split this in half, this angle is going to become 30. This will be a right angle and this half length will be one. Now using Pythagoras, we'll find that this length is going to be square root of two squared minus one squared, which is equal to root three. So this side length is going to be root three. Now using trigonometry, we can work out all the values for 30 degrees and 60 degrees. I'll show you how to do one or two of them and then you should be able to figure out the rest. So for example, if we want to find the exact value of tan 30, we know we have to use this equation. Opposite and adjacent is what we're gonna need. So we want 30 degrees. So we're gonna choose adjacent to 30 degrees. So A will be this and the opposite is obviously gonna be this then. So tan of theta, which is 30 degrees, is equal to opposite over adjacent. So one over root three. So we can fill this in, tan of 30, one over root three. Now you can repeat this to find all the other values. I'll just fill them in now to save time. Fill in this all out, we're gonna get these values for 30 degrees and 60 degrees. Now I'll show you how you can get 45 and 90. Now for finding the values of 45 degrees and 90 degrees, we're gonna again draw a triangle, but this time it's gonna be a right angled isosceles triangle with these two side lengths of one. Now I know it doesn't look the same here, but imagine it is. So that means if it's isosceles, two of its angles are going to be the same, which means these two are going to have to add up to 90. So they'll each be 45. Again, we can find this hypotenuse length using Pythagoras, square root of one squared plus one squared, which is equal to square root of two. So this is going to have a length of square root of two. Again, like before, using Sokoto, we can, for example, find the value of cos 45. So we're going to take the angle of 45. Then we do adjacent over hypotenuse. So the adjacent is this, hypotenuse is this. So cos of 45 is going to be the adjacent, which is one over the hypotenuse. So one over root two, we can fill this in. And now you do the same for the other two angles. Finding the 90 degrees values are, is a bit different. So I'll just go through all three of these. So sine of 90 is going to be equal to the opposite. Here we have 90. The opposite of this is root 2 over the hypotenuse, which is again root 2. So it's root 2 divided by root 2. Anything divided by itself is just 1. So this is going to be 1. Now, here's where it gets a bit trickier for cos and tan. If we do cos, for example, we're going to have cos of 90 is equal to the adjacent over the hypotenuse, which is root 2. However, the adjacent to this right angle, there is no clear adjacent because it could either be this or this. So as you can't decide which one it is, you just put zero there. And zero divided by anything is going to stay zero. So cos of 90 is zero. Now doing this for tan of 90, we have the opposite of what we just did. We have opposite over adjacent. So we know the opposite is root two. However, the adjacent, again, there's two options. So we can't choose. We put a zero there. However, this is the problem. You can't divide by zero. Therefore, we just say tan of 90 is undefined and I've spelled that completely wrong but just you should understand what I mean by that anyway if you want to memorize this just straight off by heart just 
take a screenshot of this or save this and then you can just look at this table and try and memorize them all off here. Now, what can they ask you to do with SUDs? Well, there's quite a few things. One of the most common is to rationalize SUDs. So let's say we have something like 2 over root 3. How would you rationalize this? What does rationalize mean, first of all? Well, it basically means we don't want a SUD on the bottom of a fraction. So to rationalize something like this, we multiply the top and bottom by what's on the bottom. So we multiply top and bottom by square root of 3. So we're left with 2 times square root of 3. And then on the bottom, we have square root of 3 squared. So the square root and the square are going to cancel each other out. So we're just left with 2 root 3 over 3. Now, here's a more complicated example. What if we have 1 over root 2 plus 4? How do you rationalize this? Well, here we do something a bit different. We multiply by the bottom of the fraction again. However, we change the sign. So instead of doing root 2 plus 4, we do root 2 minus 4. Now, it doesn't matter which order you do this. You can also do 4 minus root 2, but I'm just going to choose to do this. So on the top, we're obviously just left with root 2 minus 4 as we're just multiplying by 1. At the bottom, we have, if we expand these brackets, root 2 all squared plus 4 root 2 minus 4 root 2 and then minus 16. As you can see, these root twos are gonna cancel, four root twos are gonna cancel each other out. And like we said before, root two squared is just two. So we have root two minus four over two minus 16 minus 14. Now we can simplify this, multiply top and bottom by minus one, make it look a bit nicer. So we're left with four minus root two over 14. And that's how you rationalize more complicated examples. You just multiply by what we call the conjugate of the denominator. So we just replace the plus with a minus. Or if we had root 2 minus 4, we'd multiply by root 2 plus 4. One more thing we can do is simplifying thirds. So for example, root 60, we can simplify this. How would we simplify this? Okay, we'd write down root 60 and split up into its factors until we find one of its factors being a perfect square so that we can square root it. So root 60 is the same as root 2 multiplied by root 30. You can't take the square root of any of these numbers giving you another number, so we go further down. Instead of doing this, we can do root 4 multiplied by root 15. Now, if you notice, the square root of 4, you can take the square root, which will just give you 2. So root 60 is equal to root 4 multiplied by root 15. And again, we said root 4 is the same as 2. So the square root of 60 is the same as 2 root 15. And that's the simplest form for root 60. Finally, we'll just go over some indices. So here are the three rules that you'll mostly need to know for indices. However, there are some more as well. So if we have a number that is raised to the power of minus 1, then that is the same as 1 over that number. Similarly, if we have a number raised to the power of 1 over something, 1 over 2, for example, then we take the that number root. So we take the second root of a for this example. So if we had something like 8 to the power of a third, it would be the third root of an 8, which is just 2, as 2 multiplied by itself 3 times is going to give 8. However, what if we had something like 64 minus a half? So for this, we just do it one stage at a time. The minus, to get rid of it, we do 1 over that power. So we have 1 over 64 to the half. And anything to the power of a half, remember, is just take the square root. So it's 1 over square root of 64, which is just 1 over 8. Now, using these three rules, here's the example. What is that equal to? So first, we just deal with this. Now, look here. If we're raising a power to another power, then you just multiply out the powers. So here we're going to get x to the 3 times 2, so x to the 6, 
multiplied by y squared to the power of 2, so y to the 4. And we're dividing that by y cubed. So now, when we divide, we take away the powers. So we're going to get x to the 6. That remains the same as there's no x being divided by. And we have y to the 4 divided by y to the 3. So this will just leave us with x to the 6, y. And that's all there really is to know with indices. But just remember these rules and how to apply them. And you should be good. All right, so that's all we'll go through in this video. Now, that isn't everything that can come up in a non-calculator paper, but I've tried to go through a lot of the main topics. Here it is summarized on this page. I hope you enjoyed this video. So hope you learned something from this and just goodbye.